What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of the Brian Turner Basketball Podcast, man. And I'm, I'm seems like an eternity since the last time I've done one of these shows, but uh, no better time than the time is right now because uh, we're right in the heart of things as far as uh, if you're watching this, you're probably sitting back watching some college basketball. Um, you're probably getting ready for the uh, the state championship high school games that are coming up. But most importantly, man, this is springtime. This is the time where uh, from all of the hard work that you've put in through basketball season, from the dog days of winter or even going back to the summertime, uh, but the dog days of winter, man, playing almost 25, 26 games, uh, you're getting ready to see, you know, uh, you're, you're reaping your benefits. And uh, for the most part, I mean, this is kind of where uh, – I kind of want to take this this episode, and it, we're talking about March Madness. And with March Madness, man, it's, it's, it's like my, my favorite time of the year. Um, uh, when you think about March Madness, you think about springtime, you think about the beginning, you think about something new. Um, but where I want to take my message today is that I want to kind of talk about having a, the, the winning mentality, no matter uh, what the situation is. So um, a lot of people... On Sunday, got a chance to experience the uh, the NCAA, the announcements. You know, you had the automatic bids that, you know, if you won your conference tournament. Um, then some of those who had to wait the selection the, to the selection show Sunday to get a chance to see if you're actually going to participate uh, in the NCAA tournament. But some of us may get that call and come to that realization that we're not playing in the tournament. But again, that's OK. And I kind of want to talk about and speak on having that winning mentality and thinking win win, no matter what the situation is. You know, um, you look at a situation like not being invited to the tournament. It's probably heartbreaking for a lot of college players, you know, and, and I feel for a lot of them um, going through this experience, because when you grow up man, you you. You see those uh, the countdown shots, uh, uh, three, two, one, hitting those game winning shots, and people running off the court, being able to experience what we now call March Madness. But on the same token, for those who not you know who, who couldn't get a chance to experience that, is is people that 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 get a chance to go through that, you know. But uh, I, I, I my my heart is out to those who who were, wasn't able to make the tournament. But hats off to all of the teams and all of the coaches and all of the players to get a chance to experience uh, March Madness and, and playing in the NCAA tournament. So, again, my message today is not going to be a long one, and I want to kind of bring in a guest. Um, this is my first time doing one of these uh, call-in type type deals, and um, I felt like this is you know it's, it's a perfect time for me to to call this individual because I mean he was able to experience man so much fun in the NCAA tournament. And it was one of my, my close friends and one of my brothers uh, from the dog pound, uh, from the SIU family. Um, I want to kind of bring him in and I want to get his perspective and, and talk to him about, you know, March Madness and what, you know, what he feels like this time of the year, what it brings and and also have that, that winning mentality no matter what it takes. And any information and any, you know, inspiration or encouragement he can kind of share with the with the viewers and the listeners um, that are going through this process, man, would be would be a great time. So let me just uh, see if I can bring my my guy in and see if he oh he pick up stat man. Can you hear me? All right, so this this is my first time doing this uh, this call in type type deal. So I just did a little monologue, kind of talking about man the NCAA tournament, man, and and uh, you know by spring and March being like my favorite time of the year um, because I, I kind of touched on the fact that man us as as athletes, man, you know we start putting that work in in the summertime, and it's a all year grind, and usually around March you start reaping your benefits of all of the hard work that you kind of put in whether if it's on the coaching side, whether if it's on the player side, for people getting a chance to experience what they call March Madness. So uh, on the line, I have Stetson Hurston. He's class of 2020, no, no, 2004 or 2005? 2005 SIU Saluki 
man, dog, man, one of the all time winningest players in the school history. Um, Belleville East native, man, one of the greatest players to come out of Belleville. Um, man, Stetson Harrison, man, he's he's my guest um, on the line right now. So I really appreciate, man, you taking the time to, to kind of chop it up with me to kind of talk about March Madness, the NCAA tournament. Um, but just real quick, just growing up, man, what, what are some of your fondest memories of, of March Madness, the NCAA tournament, and college sports in general? Oh, man, uh, so many, so many great memories. Uh, those four years uh, playing college basketball and uh, definitely those two years alongside with you as well. Uh, you, you share a lot of those memories. But um, first and foremost, I would like to say just the, the time spent with my teammates. I mean, just the time spent with those guys uh, going through the, the thick and thin, uh, the ups and downs throughout the season, uh, mm-hmm. and then reaching that goal together. So I, I think those the, those memories are, are first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Um, but but just, just all the memories, uh, secondly, all the memories, uh, just playing in the tournament in general. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a once-in-a-lifetime chance. Um, you know, you have coaches that coach their whole lifetime and, and don't get that opportunity. So just even getting there once is it, it, a blessing. And uh, just, just being able to play on that field, on that stage, um, and, and being able to play for that national championship. And now uh, that's, that's, that's big. That's tough. But as a, as a kid growing up, because I, I think, like, one of my, my fondest and my closest memories, man, is, the you know, the Christian Lakeness shot, you know, uh, Duke versus Kentucky, you know, uh, Valparaiso, uh, 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 what is it, uh, Bryce Drew hitting the game when it shot. Do you have any memories as far as, like, it, whether if it's middle school or high school that you just kind of looked at to just say, man, I can't wait to get to this point to be able to play in that? Or was that ever, like, a goal or, or even a thought growing up um, uh, about about the NCAA tournament? Um, I, the first – I'll answer the question about the memory. I mean, you actually kind of – touched on a few of those i mean the, the, the two big ones really for me was the 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 christian layton shot um and then uh that that the, the foul post shot the bright drew shot so um you look at those shots those kind of touch home looking at those and just kind of thinking like man you know have an opportunity to play and be on that stage um you know that you know that'd be that'd be great and, and then that field would be awesome so mm-hmm. um you know, with with that, you know, you know, those are my those two come out, you know, stick out uh, greatly. Right, right now, because uh, like you know, just you, it's just like with the NBA, you watch you watch some of those games, man, and it's just like right off right off the top when you finish watching the game, you want to go outside and you want to kind of emulate what you just saw. And I think a lot of us, man, when we was growing up just watching college basketball, the once we saw Christian Lakeman, once we saw you know some of those huge games, because I mean, for those who was li- who listening, you know, you, once you start getting into like the Elite Eight, the Final Four, like them, the only games that's on TV, and so we're looking at like a national audience that is like everybody around the country is watching one game, watching two games, you know, and to be able to see Lakeman hit a shot like that. Right after uh, 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 Jamal Mash burned and came down and hit some shots, man, that's like, you know, that's, I mean, I think they, they constantly play that over and over again every year uh, with like CBS and then that, that soundtrack, I think it's uh, uh, this, this magic moment or winning moment from, from Luther Vandross, I think. It's like every mm-hmm. time I hear that, that soundtrack or hear something like, man, I just, I just get hyped and just thinking about that. So, Going into like your freshman year, because again, I, I played junior college basketball and I remember committing to play at SIU and it was that year. It was my my sophomore year in college. And I see you guys, man, storm out of the gate going five and oh. And I'm just like, man, they balling. What was your thought process going into that year or just, you know, trying to play that out? Did you have any aspirations or any thought that you guys were going to have that year uh, like like you had or was there anything, one moment that was just special and said, man, I think we got a good team. So kind of take me back to just like the the sum of your freshman year going into that season um, when you guys eventually ended up going to the Sweet 16. Um, man, it was, it was you know, it was kind of weird, though. It was weird because you know, I had just came back from that year of prep school 
in Maine, and you know we had some successful success out there. I had some success as a, as a player and as and as as a team. We won some games out there and did some good things. Um, and then coming in off, off of that season, coming in, you know, just didn't know what to expect. Didn't know if I'd play. You know, didn't know if I'd red shirt. You know, didn't know you know what was going to happen. But I I knew that I was going to work hard regardless of that. But and then you know I knew half the, the the team there. I mean, they pretty much called us the St. Louis Saluki. You know, pretty much. Half the team on the, or the whole team, um, you know, played for uh, at the time St. Louis Eagles, not a BBE. Um, so you know, all of us were familiar with each other, kind of knew each other a little bit. Uh, if we didn't know each other, we watched enough basketball and seen each other play enough, so we, you know, we kind of had a good feel of how each other played. Um, and then we seen the growth uh, from high school into that that next year uh, and what we did, uh, you know, as a player. So. Um, I, I seen that we were talented. I seen that we had a lot. Uh, you know, and you, and you see going, going, uh, starting out the gates five and zero. Oh, you know, you're just taking it one game at a time. You just never know what happens. You know, what's going to happen. So, uh, you know, you know, we take it one game at a time. Uh, we, 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 we that, that fifth game, that the sixth game, I think it was. We played Illinois. They were second ranked team in the country. We played them in the championship game of Las Vegas Invitational. Um, you know, and it was a it was a, it was a big game. You know, those those uh, those preseason tournament uh, games that you play, or what what you may call them, or those invitationals that you may play before the conference starts. Those are important. You know, those those all matter for seeding later on in in the year. So, you know, if you can make that run, or if you can get in the tournament, it all matters for seeding. But, you know, we we play Illinois in a championship game with this Las Vegas Invitational, and uh, we end up losing that game by three, and we were up with up one with two minutes to go and you know that was the year they had Frankie Williams and uh, Brian Cook and Archibald and Harrington and D uh, Brown uh, no no D Brown wasn't there yet okay uh, oh yeah Luther okay Head, it was Luther Head's Luther freshman Head. year and Darren Williams Darren Williams wasn't there yet it was Luther Head's freshman year the next year it was D Brown and uh, oh yeah they had came. Frank Williams from Peoria Frank Peoria Williams from Peoria. Yeah, Peoria Manual he was a McDonald's right. All-American Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And at, at the time, they were second in the country. Um, and, 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 you know, we, we you know, we hang tough with them. We had them beat. We ended up losing at the end towards the last two minutes, one, well, the last minute. So I don't going to say we had them beat, but the last minute. Um, and then after we lose that game, you, I kind of look around the room and I'm just kind of thinking at that, at that time, it's like, you know, we're a pretty good team. You know, we got a chance. We take it one game at a time. You know, we competing with a team like this and, and had them on the verge, almost beat them. Um, then uh, we can probably beat anybody. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you take it one game at a time and uh, and you see what you do in conference. The conference is always tough. You know, you're playing everybody twice and, you know, some good teams in, the, in that league in the NBC. So, uh, you know, once once you get through the season, we had a little bit of luck to, to you know, at the end of the year in conference where, um, you know, uh, Drake had beat Creighton. Creighton had uh, Kyle Corver at that time. And, Drake had beat them, gave us a tie, a share of the championship, and then we end up getting into the NCAA tournament on the at-large bid, and, and there it goes. So. Mm. Man, nah, you say there it go, and that, and that kind of kicked off everything. And, and shout out to, to Coach Weber. You know, he just finished up and resigned at K-State, man, good man. And uh, we had just had an opportunity to play for him. And I, one thing I like to tell people uh, just based on, like, my years of being around it, man, as far as – the preparation part, and I, I take a lot of that, um, a lot of pride in that when I um, when I coach my team. You know, uh, Coach Weber was the type of person, I mean, he's not going to woo you with, you know, him getting out doing drills and, and doing all type of stuff with you. Um, but at the same time, he was going to have you prepared for pretty much any and everything that you were going to see out there. So, I mean, ultimately it was going to be on us to be able to produce and play. But I just think the preparation and just knowing everything about the opposite team and knowing – everything about what we're about to go into, he kind of, you know, he kind of prepped us for that. Um, anything that kind of stood out with, with Coach Weber as far as uh, your time being there with him, even as far as the, the whole recruiting process, what are some of the things that, that kind of stood out with uh, with playing for Coach Weber? Oh, man, uh, Bruce was great. Uh, I mean, we were fortunate enough to have a great staff. Uh, I mean, he had some great guys uh, under him, but but great. Uh, but but Bruce was great, man. Bruce was was straightforward and you talk about that preparation piece man uh, I mean we were you know we were always prepared for whoever we played and, and we put that time in on the court 
to get prepared for what they were running. So we knew what was coming. And then the details of, 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 uh, of uh, all the players, um, their tendencies, um, um, everything, you know, every, everything down, down to a T. Uh, you know, Coach Weber did a great job at that and making sure he didn't leave anything out that we were well prepared for whatever game that we played. Um, so, you know, that was one of the things that, again, like, like you said, BT, um, Coach Turner, I mean, that was, I mean, that was one of the things, you know, we, we knew, we knew what they were going to do. We knew what to expect. Um, and if we got beat on something, it was something that was in the scouting report that we should have known about, you know, mm-hmm. so, um, de- definitely, um, I'm, I'm very good at preparation. I also thought that, you know, he was very good at, 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 you know, Mixing the the basketball and the and the the off the court life lessons together mm-hmm. to, to teach you and to help you uh, grow as a young man um, and as a player. So I also appreciate those things because there were a lot of times where he took you up, took you to the side or you were in his office and kind of talked to you some, about some things that, that that didn't have to do with basketball that definitely connected. Though, if that makes sense. So I'm oh, not, man. Um, it it makes perfect sense because. Uh... I'm just, I'm just like right when you was just talking just about the preparation. I think I asked you a couple times as far as like you know, um, watching the game of basketball today, and then even we're trying to implement some some things on the defensive end with us. And I used to say, man, step man, like like some of the stuff that we were doing defensively, man, was just kind of like unheard of. And you know, as far as like you know the the different like things that we knew we were gonna take away from other people, but then like different schemes. And you was just like, man, you got to think, B, man, like we had everybody on our team had a high basketball IQ. So you could put things in and talk about certain things. And then, like you said, it was just up to, for us to just pick up on it. And if we got beat, it was something that was already in the scouting report that we kind of already knew. But uh, but that was just one thing that I just felt like, man, we were just so advanced defensively when we played. But um, – but again, yeah, you talked about man that 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 great staff, and I kind of want to kind of transition into that. So we, I'm looking at, you know, the the field and the NCAA tournament. I talked to you just a little bit. You said you didn't fill out a bracket, but you watched a couple games, and I'm just looking at just the field of different teams. We got a lot of different teams from Texas. Uh, you know, some of the mainstays are always there. You know, with the with the Gonzagas, the Dukes, the North Carolinas. Um, the Michigan States, all, all of those are kind of in the mix. Um, but even making that transition um, for a, to a Final Four team, and I think uh, one of the teams that have one of the best chances is Purdue. And Purdue is uh, uh, head coach is, is Coach Matt Painter, and we both had the pleasure of playing for Coach Painter at SIU. Um, let's kind of talk about that transition from your freshman year playing for Bruce Weber to that second year playing for, for Coach Painter. Um, or No, it was the, your third year playing for Coach Painter, and just kind of the similarities and the differences in in the coaching styles or even the, just the teams um, from, from both head coaches? Oh, man, you know, it, 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 it's, it's crazy because you talk about that staff, you know, you talk about Coach, uh, Coach Weber, uh, Matt Painter, Coach Laurie, um, you know, Coach Owen, um, Coach Lust, uh, even Coach Corn. That a teammate of ours, that head coach at Simo, um, that, that, that at that time was a player. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just, you just, you know, you just kind of think about all that stuff. You talk about that high basketball IQ and things like that. But, um, but going back to, to Coach Weber and Painter, I mean, you know, it, it was different. You know, Weber was like the the grandfather, if, if I should say. You know, he's mm-hmm. like that, that that the older guy that been through it, seen it all. Glenn Robinson. Been, Dog, Conzo Martin, Purdue days, twenty years, seen a lot of stuff, right. been around it, seen a lot of it, and uh, and and Matt, um, Coach Painter was, you know, in which paint Coach Painter played for Bruce as well, you know, and, mm-hmm. and he, he was kind of a understudy of Bruce, you know, uh, Indiana guy, basketball guy. Um, he was more of the numbers uh, uh, guy, the numbers, the statistics. Mm-hmm. Um, he he was real locked into that. I mean, he was he was locked in. I mean, you know, we we go over Scott scouting report, and, and, he's, and he's one of those guys like the Jay Z numbers don't lie. You know, he was one of those guys. You know, you better you better close out with with your hands up. You know, or mm-hmm. you know, if we're watching film, if if it's a four man that, you know, he he he, you know, a year before he may have shot uh, 
45 percent from the three but this year he was kind of struggling a little bit and he say hey man those numbers those numbers ain't right those numbers from last year are right so we got to play him straight up like he's still shooting shooting 45 percent you know right. kind of things like that so um you know that that was the, the, the main difference both both very good guys very good coaches i thought coach planner had a lot of energy and he was just a little bit younger and he just related to us just a little bit differently because he was just a little bit closer in age so um two great guys um paint does a great job of recruiting uh does a great job of being straight up and being honest with his guys so as far as him having that great chance of making that run and i'm right there with you um i thought he had i thought he had a great chance a few years back uh, they made it to the lead eight um and i thought they were going to get there to the four so um, I think this may be his year. I hope it is. He has a lot of pieces and uh, a lot of guys in the stable. Uh, has about everything you, you need to, to make a successful run. So um, hopefully they can get that done. I'm, I'm definitely rooting for him. Right. Because, I mean, you, you you know, and you talk about and I, and we, we're going to kind of talk about it a little bit. But, I mean, you're looking at a 27-win team who uh, I think is playing their best, probably one of the best. Te- I'm not going to say one of the best teams he's had, but – the most potential because, I mean, they have probably one of the top players in this draft if, if he comes out and there's Nia Ivy's son who's just like a, a freak of nature. So when you get into like the Elite A, Sweet 16, Final Four around that, I mean, you got to have pros that can produce and just go out and win some games for you. But, I mean, do you think that that's the case, that he, he probably has some of the – probably one of the top players in the country on this team uh, 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 for this year? That- Definitely, definitely, and, and you know, you know, every year in a tournament, yeah, that Cinderella team or that team that makes that run, and their legend grows, and that, and they have that one player that that his legend grows on that big stage, mm. and and pushes him over the top to get to where he want to get to. But nine times out of ten, those teams that make it to that Final Four run, and they have a pro or or two or three on their team, um, <laughs> and and, and uh, as you know, you know, you talk about Ivy, you know, he has one pro, but he probably has two or three of them. Mm-hmm. On his on his team, he's got a big guy down there, that seven footer down there, that 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 oh, yeah. probably end up you know getting drafted, and there's other the other guy on the other side of him. So you, you just you know you look at the team, you look at the makeup, and and again to make it to that final four, uh, you, you have to have some pros because to get there you're beating some pros. So um, right. you know def, definitely definitely uh, has a top notch team, did a great job of recruiting. Like you like you said, uh, you know maybe not his best team because he had a he had a, a team some years back with five starters that were probably all NBA guys. I think four of them made it pro, maybe three of them, and one guy would have been pro if he maybe didn't hurt his knee. So, mm-hmm. um, but you but you you, you look at his, his program and his teams, and they're they're solid. They they play hard defensively. They run their stuff, and he, he has some pros. So, um, I, I look forward to watching them, and hopefully hopefully they get there. Right, right, right. No, and, and kind of, I want to kind of a, a, a little bit kind of bring it home, but I kind of want to tie in like like your legend too, along with this conversation. Um, being one of the all time uh, winningest players in school history, and I mean that that right there just speaks for itself. And and somebody that has to have a winning mentality, like no matter what. And that that's kind of what the message today is. Is like I said, just having that that think win win no matter what you know even if we you know i don't even like to say losses i like to say you know those are lessons you know even if you got you know seven losses on your record eight losses on your record those those are all lessons that you can learn to just you know maybe um in, in someday you know and it may it may not be that exact year within that season and some of those lessons may come when you're you know when either you transition to your your last year senior year or even when you get out to being a man you, you just realize it like man i just remember those things that i learned during those times and um like like even do, do you have any game that that kind of stood out in your mind that you just make made to say man that, that that's a lesson that i learned no matter what because i mean you played in some huge games whether if it's hitting game winning shots in the uh bracket buster games or playing against you know big time players on that big stage Man, anything that, that you can just add to the conversation that can kind of help either a parent, a coach, a player move for us, for us thinking, uh, having a winning mentality. Uh, what, what are some of the things that you can kind of express uh, from that framework? Oh, man. Uh, talk about winning. I mean, you know, I, I look at my look at the high school program I came from, you know, uh, back at Belleville East. And, 
my freshman year, we were sixth in the state, and you know we had some talent there, and we won a bunch of games. My sophomore year, we, we won 25 games, but uh, but Edwardsville was pretty good. Had a couple of seven footers, a couple of all-stater guys, but you know, following two years, junior senior year, didn't win as many games as I as I'd like to win. Didn't win 20 games, but did win uh, in the high teens. Um, but um, I, I think that's that. You know, you, you you work you work every day, and, and it's a mindset. You know, the work you put in, what you put into it, is what you're going to get out of it. I believe. Um, and then you putting in that work, I think the basketball guys are going to bless you. Mm. Uh, and when and when you put you put in that work and you put in that time, um, and then you have a, a group of guys because you know once you get into coaching, you know, and you look you get into coaching, you coach for some years, and then you look back at the things that you accomplished as a player. Uh, at the at that level, uh, I'm, I'm talking myself particularly as as winning four championships and you know winning 103 games in four years or, or whatever it may be and you know the the, the whatever accolades it may be three pointers assists points you know whatever it may be mm-hmm. um, you know you look you look look back at those things and you realize how special a group of guys that you had or, or, or the guys that you were with you know they they were all they all had the same mindset they all did the want to do the right thing they all worked hard, um, which allowed the basketball guys to bless us in a, in a lot of ways. So I, I look at that. I, I, again, I'll go back to that, that winning mindset um, that when, once you have, have a taste and you get a piece of it, um, that, 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 that when you put your all into something and you work really, really hard and, and towards a goal and, uh, and, and you, you uh, achieve that goal and, you, and, and it feels great. And once you get that piece, and you don't you don't want to you you don't want to settle for anything less than that. Mm. Um, are, I yeah, think, I like I think, that. And I and I think that you 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 strive uh, moving forward. You strive to get that same feeling that you had before. Mm. Um, and when you do that, um, you know, and, and and the basketball guys bless you, man. I, I look at that. I think about that. Uh, we talked earlier about that Sweet Sixteen year. Um, you know, for us, even you know, we won that con- win the conference. We didn't win the conference tournament, but we tied because you know somebody else went beat, beat Creighton. You know, you just look at all those things. Uh, um, you know, you, you look at some of those games when you you, you touched on. You know, g- game winning shots, tip ins, or, or shots at the buzzer, or uh, even a game. I look at a game on the road in, in the conference play when you're down seven points uh, with one minute to go, but then you find some way to come back and win that game on the road in regulation. Mm. Um, you know, moments like that, games like that, uh, uh, things like that, the, the teachings from your coaches. Um, you know, when you win a game like that, when you're down six or one minute to go, you just you look back at everything that your coach told you and everything that he needed you to execute. And did you go out there and execute it? And if you did, did it help you win that game? And when, once you see that it does, then it, 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 it just it's that mindset, man. You get a piece of it. You don't want anything less than that. Right. Um, and and you know to, to to those guys to those kids that those 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 athletes that's, that's striving for that man just you know at times you have to take a look look in the mirror and, and ask yourself are you giving everything you know are you putting everything out there um, and because when you do do that man it's contagious man, it's oh, contagious man because man, man I was just contagious. gonna say that as far as the having the abundance mindset to where it's like it's like an all you can eat buffet like if. If you have that mindset of, of uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it done, to win and have this winning mentality, it's contagious. And then not everybody can eat and everybody can have success of you just having that mentality and you're not looking at it as like I'm pointing my finger at this person. He's the reason or he's not the reason. But it's just like having that 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 uh, abundance mindset to where, you know, if, even if I do it and I work hard, then somebody else is going to feed off this energy and my energy and they're going to – you know, bring the same type of effort. Do you think that's kind of what, what you're kind of speaking of? Oh, definitely. Definitely what I'm speaking of, man. I mean, because, you know, you know, college basketball, you know, high school, you know, you, you, it's what that's what you have, you know. But, you know, college basketball, you know, you, really, you start winning some games, you have to recruit and you recruit kids and kids want to go to winning programs. And, you know, they want to go to winning programs, but do they want to do what it takes to, to sustain that? To keep that, to, to keep that tradition, to keep winning games, to to keep to keep uh, the program alive, and you know, once you get there, you know, do you want to do that? And and if when you see everybody else bought in and doing all the stuff, the dirty work, the toughness, working hard, staying after getting extra shots up, watching the watching the film, asking questions, talking to coaches, 
when you see everybody else doing that, man, it, it, it's contagious. You just have to fall in line, you know, mm-hmm. and, and to be honest, quite, quite honest, you know, and when I look back at that, you know, because we had a, you know, at that time we had a bunch of guys, you know, that, 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 that end up leaving and transferring, you know, it's kind of, you know, if they couldn't do it, you know, we kind of looking at them like, man, you know, hey, this, this, this is what we do to win, you know, right. hey, th- th- this is what it takes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if that's not what, what you can do, then, hey, this train going to keep moving. <laughs> so. Man, no, nah, that's that's real, man. So, again, man, I appreciate your time, man. You know, like I said, if nothing else, man, if, if we can kind of um, get someone to listen to kind of, you know, if they, if they like this message, if they like what we're talking about, man, that they would uh, uh, just kind of take heed to a lot of this different stuff that we, we kind of share, but just having that win-win mentality, man, that, uh, that abundance mindset that everybody can eat if you just come and you do your part and you work hard and uh, people can just respect it. So, um, again, man, I appreciate you for your time. This was going to be uh, a nice, sweet, look, quick message, but I just wanted to kind of drive that home. You know, we're in the height of the NCAA tournament. Um, like I said, a lot of folks didn't get a chance to, uh, to to make it to the tournament. Some folks got a chance to get in, but regardless, if you're playing like, you know, playing in the NIT, NCAA, man, just be grateful that you're able to play basketball in this climate um, during this time, during the time of your life where you're supposed to be getting it done in, in your, uh, you know, early, late teens, early 20s, and experience college basketball, man, at its finest. So, uh, Seth and Harrison, uh, uh, Saluki, great Saluki legend, man. I appreciate your time, man, that you spent with me on here. And, uh, man, I'll holler back at you. Man, man, Brian, I appreciate it. Um, thank you for having me, man. I really, really do, really do appreciate it, man. It was great to talk about Coach Weber, considering everything. Before we we get off, man, I just want to leave leave you. I know we kind of talked about this, but I want to leave this message out there with Coach Weber, man. One thing that last thing that, that one thing that kind of stuck out. I want to go back around to that, but mm-hmm. one thing that kind of stuck out with Coach Weber, man. Before we go, man, is that um, the one thing he said to me that that kind of stuck, and he said it my freshman year. Um, the best team has the best players. So if you're worried about accolades, just worry about winning games, man, because if you win games, you'll get everything that you work for. Man, the, the best so. team has the best players. Man, that might have to be a tweet first thing tomorrow morning, man, in, in, in this, when I, when I put this out. So, man, I appreciate that knowledge, man. Hats off to Coach Weber. Hats off to all our coaches, man, that we play for. All of the coaches that are playing in the state tournament, coaches that are playing in the NCAA, NIT, man, even the little league coaches, man. Shout out to everybody, man. That's that's uh, continued up, man, to to help out the next generation, man, in this game of basketball that has done so much for us um, in our lives um, right now as we speak. So appreciate you, um, and I hope everybody enjoyed this. And uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can take us out with the. With a little bit of the, of the um, uh, let me see, can I can I do it? There we go. All right, Stead, I'll holler back at you, man. Appreciate you, bro. No problem, BC. Appreciate you.